So today we're talking about the last two uh, One Piece chapters. My routine now is every time Oda is on break and we have, we don't have a chapter that week, that's when I come in and talk about the chapters that went on that month. We've only had two chapters since the last break, so I'll be discussing two chapters. I have brought several pages of notes. So this is, I'm gonna be talking about it out of order, but there's intentionality there. So hang out with me for a minute because I'm really excited to talk about these chapters. So we will be discussing chapter 1048 and 1049, and we're gonna start with Kaido's flashback because there's a lot to there's a lot to unpack in these two chapters. I'm gonna try to keep it concise, but I'm also me, so here we are. So these flashbacks, Kaido's flashbacks, Kaido's um, little snippets of flashbacks that we that we got managed to both show us a ton and also show us absolutely nothing that we wanted to see from a flashback. This flashback shows Kaido being the most infamous child fighter or the most infamous fighter in his childhood to questioning the authority, questioning the systems at play, to being forced into servitude to those systems. And he was used as a bargaining chip. No one really cared about his life. He, he nobody viewed him as a human. They viewed him as a chance to be able to be a part of the reverie. And then finally to getting to this old hardened man who thinks that war is the only way to solve anything. He went to questioning and considering change, maybe wanting change, to not really actually believing that there ever could be any. I think a lot of what we saw in this flashback is the undoing of Kaido. And I also just don't think that this is the only flashback that we're gonna get. I think Oda was very intentional with withholding information. There was a lot of information that we could have and reasonably should have gotten out of these flashbacks and it was intentionally withheld from us. And I think there's a reason for that. I think it's because this is only the beginning of the flashbacks that we're gonna get. I think we're gonna get more Kaido flashbacks. I think we're gonna get a Rocks fl flashback. I think that there's a lot more to come and the more we get, the more this Kaido flashback is going to feel more significant. And it, it's gonna be, it's, it's one of those things where week to week, it might feel a little bit underwhelming, but once we get to read it all at once and we get to get the entirety of the mini flashbacks that we're probably gonna be getting, or at least the several flashbacks that we're gonna be getting, it's all gonna piece together and I just have faith in the way Oda's gonna handle this. We also see how quick Kaido is to kill. Somebody shows the tiniest bit of opposition to him, of questioning him, dead instantly. No thought, no regret. Which I think adds a lot to Kaido n wanting a fair fight with Luffy. He doesn't care about a fair fight. He doesn't care about any of the things that we've seen from him with Luffy. He will kill without thought and be fine with it. But with Luffy, it's different. And I think that adds a lot of significance to that. And the other major thing that these flashbacks did is show the disparity of the people of Wano, which we've already seen this entire scene with the red scabbards getting away, the vassals getting away, Kaido chasing down uh, Momo, all this stuff we've seen before, but this time we see it in snippets from the perspective of the people. And we see it right before as a quick, stark, painful reminder right before we take their oppressors down, first Orochi in 1048 and then Kaido in 1049. Between the factories going up, them not having clean water anymore, no food, having their freedom stolen and being forced into work, the line, no one is coming to help the noose. All these things are just a flash reminder of what it is that we're taking down in these two chapters, as well as kind of a reminder of the cruelty of these oppressors. Kaido has been really, he's been humanized a lot in these last several chapters with him wanting a fair fight with Luffy and getting to see him more up close, getting to see more emotions from him. He's becoming more of a likable antagonist. And in this flashback, we're reminded just how brutal and cruel he actually is, as well as how brutal and cruel Orochi is. As soon as the vassals are free, he says, hey, you know what? They've got a son. Why don't you go after him, you big lug? And we get the information that the whole smile thing wasn't even Kaido's idea. It was the lady who once owned Bon Clay's fruit. All this was a very quick reminder of what we're taking down right before we did, taking down Orochi in 1048 and then Kaido in 1049. Now, how do I feel about these defeats? So in 
Uh, 1048, the chapter begins with Kaido saying, the hero of this country was burned 20 years ago. And then he turns into the flame dragon torch, which was an amazing move. I love it. Kaido being inside of a giant flame dragon. It's the coolest thing ever and I love it. But Kaido reminding Luffy that the hero of this nation, uh, what, how, what was his words again? was burned 20 years ago right before turning into a giant torch and burning Luffy is just the right kind of petty for him. And then having Kaido be lit up in flames and Orochi being lit up in flames in the exact same chapter and then Orochi going down and then Kaido going down right as he was mocking Luffy about their, their about Wano's ruler going down in flames, that's poetic. That's beautiful. So for Orochi, I did want Hiyori to be the one to take him down just because she hasn't really been utilized in Wano yet. And I feel like she deserves a chance to shine because I do think that she suffered as much as anyone else here has. And in a lot of ways, she suffered more than a lot than a lot of the people. I mean, not that it's a contest, but she suffered a lot and she's been so strong. And I really didn't want, I was, I was both okay with Jin, Dinjiro coming in to save her, which was kind of, you know, you could kind of see it coming, but, and then I was also not okay with it because I just wanted her to have a moment to shine and not just deliver a monologue and have, have the moment taken. But it was, it was, it was satisfying enough. I'm happy with this scene because of the parallel of the first time Denjiro, um, you know, how, how those two scenes side by side look so similar when he stepped in supposedly on behalf of Orochi and then this time to take him down. And in both cases, it was actually for her. And then whenever he bowed in front of her and said, you have been so brave and strong for all these years, Lady Hiori. She has. She has, and I really appreciate that recognition and that recognition from the man who raised her and the man who protected her all this time and gave up so much to make sure that she would be okay and who clearly cares about her. It was a beautiful moment. I do think that Orochi is finally down for good. Um, the main reason for thinking this is because of the symmetry in which this scene was played out. So if you look at the page, you have Denjiro coming in and cutting off his head and ending it. And then immediately after that, you cut to panels of the people celebrating and putting their wishes in the sky. And the one which, the one wish that's showcased is that Orochi would go down. I don't remember the exact wording for it, but that that they would be freed from Orochi specifically, and then you cut back to J Denjiro in the aftermath after taking down Orochi, and that's the kind of that's the kind of theatrical ending that Oda tends to do when something is finished. He he does stuff like this, and the way he formatted that with the death, the wish, the the aftermath of the death, that looks really final to me. So I do think that we're done with Orochi which I'm thrilled by. Get him out of here. For Kaido's demise, let's talk about that now. In the beginning of chapter 149, 1049, well done, this is a Kaido line, well done, you fought hard to reach this point, but you cannot change the world. This is in the chapter where we learn that in Kaido's flashbacks, he wanted to change the world. He was looking, I mean, we've, we've already addressed that in other flashbacks with his flashback with King, or I guess that was King's flashback, where we knew that he had grand plans. But in this one, we see him as a child questioning the powers that be that are forcing him to fight. And in the chapter where we see him questioning the powers that be, and then being used as a tool, and then losing hope, and then saying war is the only answer. In this chapter, the chapter starts off with him saying, well done, you fought hard to reach this point, but you cannot change the world. In the same chapter that we see him giving in to the idea that he could change the world, and give, I mean giving up on the idea that he could change the world, he's challenging Luffy and saying you can't change the world. I love that. Also, he says uh, later on in the chapter, and what kind of world can you create, Straw Hat? He says, a world where my friends can eat as much food as they want. Kaido, big eyes, reply, he, 
Kaido's reaction to what Luffy says is big eyes because another thing that we learned about in the flashback is that Kaido, the only time that he would get captured is when he was hungry so he would get captured so he could eat and then escape, which I'm sorry, but that seems a whole lot like um, Rayleigh who used to allow himself to get sold into slavery so that he could steal from the people who, who bought him so that he could pay off his gambling debts. That is so, those two, that is so similar. Anyway, so so he would get captured only only to eat and then and then escape again which makes me think that Kaido is well acquainted with the feeling of being very hungry and very deprived which is not surprising because in his flashbacks it looks like nobody was looking out for him and nobody really treated him as if he mattered or deserved to be taken care of also in chapter 148 he said that giant fist of yours will not come down on me. It will melt into nothing first. And then Luffy responds by saying, the old man taught me how to do that without touching. I'll smash you all the way down to hell. So everybody has already talked about the fact that Oda said, Luffy can't down, just take down Kaido by punching him, right? So here's the thing, he didn't just punch him. He didn't just wind up extra hard and punch a little bit. He didn't just will himself into a bigger punch. I wrote this down on my phone. It took several rounds of fighting. The worst generation, Yamato, Odin Samurai, Luffy getting three power-ups and uh, training with the old man to learn to fight, to learn to be able to hit without punching so that he, er, to punch without hitting, to hit without contact so that he wouldn't get burned. So yes, it was a punch, but it wasn't just a punch. It wasn't just, I have to try harder and then punch, which is what a lot of his victories have been and they're, they've been satisfying and I've loved it. But this has been a lot more than just another punch. And this punch delivered us this full circle image from Kaido when we first meet him falling from the sky and leaving a Kaido shaped hole in the ground. And then this time Kaido falling from the sky and leaving a dragon Kaido shaped hole in the ground, which again, it's just like, it's really good symmetry. It's a nice little circle. He, Oda does a really good job of just like of bringing things together in a really satisfying way. All this is followed by the flashback where he says to King, I think I know who Joy Boy is. He is the man who shows up to beat me in the future. So Kaido falling from the sky and creating a dragon Kaido shaped hole in the ground, which is the perfect reflection of how we met him, immediately followed up by a flashback of him telling King that Joy Boy is the one who's supposed to come and beat him in the future. That's, I, that's so Oda to have Kaido be beat and then immediately have a flashback talking about who's supposed to beat him. The one that just did. Also, also, and, and as soon as Kaido was taken down, we once again flash back to the people of Wano sending their wishes in the air and what wish is highlighted? Beat the scary dragon. Do I think Kaido is down for good and this is the end? Yes. When I first read it, I said no, because when I first read it, I felt like mm, that wasn't the most satisfying chapter for a climax, for the end, for the finishing of the greatest villain we've faced so far, or at least most powerful villain we've faced so far. No, I thought it would be a bigger moment than that. But upon reflection, seeing all this cemetery, sim symmetry, seeing all the ways that Oda has called back to things and the ordering that he did on things, the ordering that he did with the lines and then the, and then the next panel and, the, and, and the, the flashbacks immediately before or after the way, the way he structured these two chapters is actually really brilliant. And I went back and reread a lot of this fight and reading it all in one go, reading the fight as one continuous story instead of broken up into pieces, it is a it, it is a really satisfying fight. It is, I'm happy with this ending. I don't think Kaido is dead because it's one piece, but I do think, I, I think he's been defeated. I think this is it. And the way this was all structured, the way especially these last two chapters were structured, I'm satisfied. Um, final big thing to talk about, we will talk about briefly because it was only mentioned briefly, and that's Momo's success with Oshima. 
Oshigimi. Oshimagi. Why can't I think of the name? Onigashima! Momo finally saving Oni, Oni, Onigashima. Now, I do think that the panels that we got were really, really good. There's not much that needed to happen with these panels because what Momo needed to do was a pretty straightforward thing and, and it's something that we didn't need a lot of explanation for. We, we didn't need a lot from it, we just needed to see it. And we did. And seeing him finally be able to accomplish the thing that he's repeatedly say, no, I can't, and then lowering the island to the ground safely before collapsing, it was, it was really beautiful. But it was so short. <laughs> That's my biggest complaint about these two chapters is this right here. Because while I think what we got was great, it was quite little, wasn't it? I mean, for the last several chapters, we have spent a lot of time repeating ourselves that Momo, you need to, you need to make these flame clouds. Momo, you gotta do it. Momo, we need you. And then, and then like, and then he does it. And it's just like, it, it seemed like it was going to be a big event. And it feels a little bit condensed. I thought it was going to be more of an event, but hopefully we'll have in the next chapter or two, we'll have a lot of reflection on that, a lot of celebrating, a lot of talking about it to make it feel more impactful than it felt in this chapter. A couple of things of note before I leave you. We got a panel of all the panels that we could have used for Momo. There was one that was sacrificed for the CP0 guy. And I have to think that there was a reason for that. I have to think that there's something significant happening here. And it's of him flying away with the fight in the background, which I think was intentional. So the question is, was he leaving because he realized that the battle was lost and he was like, I gotta get out of here? Or was he leaving because he wanted to go warn the white guard that the battle is about to be over and no matter who wins, you know, it's time to attack because the White Guard is still out there. The, there's still all these ships just chilling outside of Wano. So my guess is that the CP0 guy realized the fight's about to end and he's now off to tell the White Guard, all right, time to attack. Also, the seawater is now drowning all of our Devil Fruit users. The seawater that our amazing Jembe and uh, Rizo sent to everybody, the wonderful Zoe seawater, I loved that whole thing, is now flushing everyone out and drowning all of our Devil Fruit users, specifically that panel with Robin and Brooke. I, I just want everyone to be okay. Now it did look like all the water was draining and that's what put out Kaido's flame clouds is because the water went over his flame clouds. So I think they're all just gonna be washed up and it's gonna be fine, but there's a lot of questions involved with this. One, are Devil Fruit users going to pop back up and be super happy and chill and ready to fight some more, or are they gonna be really, really weak? Because, you know, sometimes ocean water affects Devil Fruit users in different ways. And two, is this, is all of this water and the way it's affecting Devil Fruit users and the way it does affect Smile Fruit users as well, is this now going to take away the effects that Tama's face cheeks have had on all the Smile Fruit users. Are they now no longer going to be brainwashed and forced into, into her servitude? Are they going to wake up and say, hey, I want to fight against you, not for you, and then tar start taking swings at our straw hats? I have many questions. They will be answered when Oda gets around to it. He is a slow storyteller, but I'm not complaining because I, I would like for this story to go on for a long time. There's a lot more that we could dig into because these, Two chapters are, are very dense. There's a lot going on in them, but those are the main things that have hit me, that have impacted me. I think Orochi is done and I think Kaido is done. And I think, th and the reason I think those things, I would actually be suspicious of both of those things, both of those characters getting back up. But because of the way Oda told their downfall this time, I'm convinced it's done. And because of the way he told their downfalls, I'm satisfied with both of these endings for them. We'll see though. I'd love to continue chatting with you about any of the things that I didn't mention in this video, any of the things that I did. What, what's your take? Are you happy with, if Orochi and Kaido are down, are you happy with the way they went down in these chapters? I think I am. 
but I'd love to continue talking about it in the comments. Check out my Patreon if you like. We live read these together and chat. We have a lot of fun over there. Actually, we just had a trivia night for One Piece and that was a blast. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I post vlog videos on the second channel on Thursdays. That's linked in the description. Please chat with me more in the comments. I will talk to you again soon.